Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we went ahead and set up our menu, so we now have a working menu with drop downs, uh, which is really nice. So we have all static HTML right here right now. So we want this to reflect the blog posts from within our WordPress installation. So first thing I want to do is actually create some blog posts. All right, so let's go here and we'll say add new. Let's say blog post one. And I'm going to just grab some dummy content. I'll generate some Larm Ipsum. Copy that. Paste that in. Uh, let's add a category here. We'll say business. And publish. All right. Let's add another post. Paste that in. Actually, I'll, I'll just switch the paragraphs. Okay, add category, we'll say technology. And we'll add some tags. And publish. Okay, so let's go back to the front end. And now we need to open up our index PHP and we want to go under where we have the header okay so this HTML is from the example template that we got from get bootstrap so we're gonna to try to stick to that that HTML just make it dynamic so it looks like we have a blog main div that holds all the blog posts alright then we have a div with the class of blog post looks like that contains one then we have another blog post and then another so what we want to do is we want to create a loop that is going to spit out a blog post. Sorry about that. As long as there are blog posts. So we're going to keep this first div class blog post and get rid of the, the other two. All right. And then what we'll do is we're going to wrap uh, a loop around this one. All right. So to do this. Let's first check to see if there are blog posts. We can do that with PHP if have posts. Okay, that's a WordPress function to check to see if there's posts. All right, and then we're going to end that right here. Okay, and I'm going to get rid of this nav for now. Okay, so we'll check and then let's put an else here as well. Okay, and if there are none, then we just want to say that. And actually, when you spit out text like this, you should wrap it in a localization function. So um, we should be able to do double underscore no posts found. All right. Now, if there are posts, then we want to loop through them. So what we can do here is we're going to say PHP while. OK, we want to say while have posts. All right. And then in WordPress, we have to do this thing where we put a colon and then we say the post, which is a little weird. It took me a little while to get used to, but um, that's the, the correct syntax. All right, and then we want to end the while down here. All right, so let's go ahead and save that and see what happens. OK, so you can see that it's just spitting out this sample text, but there's three of them and that goes that matches the three posts that we have here. What we need to do is just make these dynamic so it spits out the correct content. All right, so we'll start with the title. OK, so the title's right here. We're going to replace this with PHP the underscore title. All right, we'll save that, go back, reload. And now you can see that the titles are now changed to the correct titles. OK. Now I'm going to skip the date and the meta for a second and go right to the content. So I'm going to replace all of this. Okay, not the div. Everything inside. 
and let's put in PHP the content. All right, we'll save that, reload, and now you can see that we're getting the content from each post, which is what we want. Now, you may not want the entire thing, the entire post to show here because this is kind of a um, main blog post area. You'd probably want a read more button. So to, to shorten this up, what we can do is instead of the content, we can use the excerpt. Okay, so if I save that and reload, now you can see that it's much shorter. Now, you may want to... Um, control how long you want this so to do that what we can do is go into functions PHP and we're going to create a function okay we're going to have a function and let's call it set excerpt length all right, and all we're going to do here is return a number. So let's say return 20. All right, now we need to use a filter here, not an action. We're going to say add filter. All right, <clears throat> and the idea of this is add action is used to create something. Add filter is used to edit something. All right, so we do need a hook here. The hook we're going to use is excerpt length. And then we just want to put the name of our function. Save that, go back, and now we get 20 character, 20 words. Okay, I think that's a little too short, so I'm going to set this to, let's say, uh, 45. Okay, now, right now we don't have a way to get to the single post page. Uh, what we can do is add a link to the heading and or add a read more button okay so let's go to the heading or the title and we're going to wrap this in a link and that's going to go to php the permalink okay wrap that save it and if we reload Oops, what happened? Uh, oh. Whoa. Oh, I didn't finish the A tag. All right, so now we have a title that's linkable. We click it. It takes us to that particular post. Now the single post isn't showing all the content. Don't worry about that yet. We're going to get to that in a little bit. So back to the main blog post page. Um, now we want to fix this because right now this metadata is just completely static. So let's go to where we have that. Okay, and we want the date and the author. So let's start with the date. So what we can do here is we can say PHP the date, save it, reload, and we get the date. All right, now there's a, a lot of different ways to format it. If you are familiar with the date function in PHP, you can use any of those formatting um, strings. Uh, where are we? And in addition to the date, you can also use the time. Now, if we just use the time by itself, it just gives us the time, which isn't very helpful. We want to know the date, too. So we can actually add some formatting in here. All right, so let's do that. And I'm not going to go over the formatting. If PH, the PHP documentation has all this stuff. But basically what this is going to do is give us the date and the time. Okay, so we get May 23rd and we get the time. Now for the author, okay, what we can do here is say PHP the author, reload, and there we go. Now for the link, we want that to go to a page where it shows all the posts by that author. So what we can do is place that 
with a function called get author posts URL. All right, now that alone isn't going to do it. We have to pass in um, another function as a parameter. So this is going to be get underscore the meta. Um, no, get the author meta. All right, and then we're just going to pass in here ID. Okay, save that, reload. Okay, what do they do? Oh, did I not end the PHP? No, I didn't. All right, and if we click on that, it's going to take us to a page with all of the author's posts, which is every post. <laughs> Actually, that doesn't look right. This the, the URL should be different. What did I do wrong? Oh, we got to echo it. That's right. Okay, so now you can see the URL. It says author slash admin. All right, so that's the main blog post blog page. Now you, you'll notice that uh, when we're in a post. Okay, when we're in the edit or add post, we don't have that that image option down here that you may have seen uh, before for a featured image. That the reason for that is because we didn't we didn't include support for that in our theme. So to do that is really easy. We just need to go to our functions PHP and we can actually go to our theme setup function. Okay, and then all we need to do is say add theme support and then we can pass in post thumbnails okay save it go back and reload and now we have a featured image option so let's go ahead and set a featured image I have some um, images on my desktop that I will include in the um, github repository I'm gonna upload those okay let's go ahead and choose one of these we'll say set featured image update Okay, that was blog post two. Let's go to one. Set featured image. Update. And let's see, I forget which one I used that one. All right, and then hello world. We'll grab that. Okay, so we'll update. Now, if we go to the front end and reload, we're not going to see any change because we didn't include that in our index file. So let's go to our index file and we'll put this right below where the meta is. So this here. Let's do um, first of all, we'll check to see if there is a thumbnail. So we'll say PHP if has post thumbnail. Okay, if it does, then we're going to say PHP the post thumbnail. All right, we'll save it. Let's reload. And now the image shows up, but it's not um, it's not fitting for within that div. So what we'll do is let's wrap let's wrap this in a div. We'll call post thumb. And then what we'll do is go to our CSS file. We'll say post thumb. Let's set the width to a hundred percent and let's set height to auto. Okay, now we'll go back and reload and nothing. Oh, I'm sorry, we got to do post thumb image. Okay, so now it fits. All right, good. Let's actually put a little bit of margin below it as well. Okay, we'll say eight pixels. All right, so now we have our blog posts with images. 
In the next video, we'll take a look at how to format our single page because right now it just looks exactly like the index because it's actually using that index file. Okay, so we'll do that next.